Joined from London now by Geoffrey Donaldson, DUP MP. You're very welcome to the programme, Geoffrey Donaldson, and thank you for joining us tonight. Your party didn't sign up to the Belfast Agreement, but do you say now that in terms of bringing peace to this island, that it has worked? Well, of course, the Good Friday Agreement has evolved since 1998, and we had the St Andrews Agreement that brought significant change, change that we welcomed. And indeed, we have sought to work the revised agreement and to deliver for uh, all of us um, a peaceful future. It is highly regrettable that at the moment the political institutions established under the agreements um, are not functioning. Okay. I think I... that has been a major deficit. OK, but in the context of Brexit, how does Brexit sit with the Good Friday Agreement or are they like oil and water? Are they just incompatible? I don't accept that they are incompatible at all. I think that uh, the Good Friday Agreement, the uh, institutions established under the Belfast Agreement can function effectively uh, in the context of Brexit. Uh, and uh, it is up to all of us um, to ensure that that does happen, which is why I think we need to look at how we deliver our shared objectives here, which are, of course, to preserve uh, the uh, uh, political institutions established by the agreement and indeed to have them functioning again to uh, uh, ensure that we can continue to cooperate through uh, that agreement and uh, that we um, get a deal uh, that works for um, both parts of the island and okay. uh, that works for the United Kingdom as a whole. Can we just talk about how that might work? Because I'm conscious that at this stage, you know, all two years on, um, the people are bamboozled by Brexit, more than two years on indeed. But what will happen is, if you think about it logically, the border on the island of Ireland will become the external frontier of Europe. So how does that not imply that we will have a border on the island of Ireland? We will have a border on the island of Ireland. It's elementary, it's logical, it makes sense. There's no other way. Well, Claire, we already have a border on the island of Ireland. The, the currency in the Irish Republic is the euro. In Northern Ireland, it's sterling. Uh, we have different customs regimes. We have different uh, fiscal uh, policies. Oh, so on. there is already, uh, there I, is already I, I a border on the island of Ireland a certain, in that I accept sense. what you're saying to a certain extent. But this is different. This is an external frontier between the UK following whatever rules they decide to follow, World Trade Organization rules if there's no deal, and the EU. It's a different ball game to what you describe is there now. Well, I accept that, uh, Claire, and I think that what we have to do now is to work to ensure that it doesn't become a hard border. And we don't want to see a hard border on the island of Ireland. We have made that clear from the outset following the vote of the British people um, to have Brexit, to leave the European Union, we made it clear. And when Arlene Foster, our party leader, co-signed a letter with Martin McGuinness, the then uh, Deputy First Minister, um, they made clear they didn't want a hard border. And that remains our position. So I think how do we avoid it? We all Ex explain, have to do. explain to the people here you're talking to tonight across the Republic of Ireland, how do we do that? Well, I think that we have to find a way of uh, ensuring that the cooperation that has taken place uh, between Northern Ireland and the Irish Republic under the Belfast Good Friday Agreement continues. Uh, and I think that we need to find practical arrangements to ensure that this happens. So why hasn't um, as you that know, happened we have a... here to four? We've got 53 days left. It's two years since that withdrawal agreement, uh, since Article 50 was triggered by Theresa May. No one's come up with the solution. I know there's a delegation of MPs in Brussels today. They haven't come up with the solution. Where is it going to come from and what is it? Well, I think Belfast and Dublin have a crucial role to play in this. And I think that what we need to do now is set aside the megaphones uh, and get down to work. Um, uh, when I look at uh, the journey we've been on over the last 25, 30 years, uh, the mountains that we've climbed in the peace process are far higher than this mountain. We can do this. We can work this out. I am convinced of that. But what we need is goodwill on both sides uh, and we need a pragmatic approach to address these issues. It is not beyond uh, uh, the uh, ability and the capacity of the government in Dublin, uh, of ourselves in Northern Ireland, uh, of London and Brussels to work this out. We believe there are solutions that can be applied here, but we need to talk to each other about that, not at each other. Can I ask you at this stage, I mean, you vote with, with um, the Conservative Party in London, you're, you're keeping Theresa May there, but given what she has done in recent times, agreeing to the withdrawal deal and then throwing it up in the air and saying, no, we're going to go back and renegotiate this. Do you trust the woman? 
Well, I think the Prime Minister is doing her best in very difficult circumstances. But clearly, the House of Commons said that uh, what was on the table uh, in the form of the current withdrawal agreement was unacceptable. And uh, last week, they focused in specifically on the backstop arrangement. And so they said you, that look, you, we want Donaldson, an alternative arrangement that works for the UK you, as well as for the European Union. Geoffrey Donaldson trust Theresa May? Yes, I do. And uh, she will be very welcome to Northern Ireland tomorrow. Um, but what we need to do now is to put together proposals. Um, uh, and that includes engaging with the Irish government. We want to do that. And uh, I hope that um, this week we will we'll see serious engagement between Belfast and Dublin on how we work this out and come up with pragmatic solutions. Where do you stand on the time limit to the backstop? Should there be one and how long should that time limit be? Well, you forgive me, Claire, but I'm not going to um, uh, negotiate on the air uh, with Dublin on this. I, I think that uh, I want to respect the integrity of the Irish government's position. and I want to sit down with them uh, and see how we can move this forward. So I, I'm not going to uh, uh, negotiate on the airwaves. I want to do that face to face with the Irish government. And it's not just about Ireland, though, is it? And we've, we've heard the Irish government saying before that we won't have bilateral talks here, that this is about Europe and the UK. And they've ruled that out. I mean, have you made that invitation formally to the Irish government? Has it been rejected formally? Uh, uh, no, uh, uh, I believe that there will be uh, meaningful engagement uh, between the Irish government and ourselves. I think that's very important. Uh, when we met the Prime Minister them? last week... H have you asked the Irish government? Yes, we have. There has been contact uh, and I believe there will be meaningful engagement. And when we met the Prime Minister in London last week, we talked about this. And the Prime Minister is very supportive of that kind of engagement. All right, Geoffrey Donaldson, thank you for joining us from London uh, tonight. That's Jeffrey